Oh, yeah, the Bible. That's what I was talking about. Uh, <laughs> it's all themed, lads. It's all very delicately themed, but it is. It's about rules and laws and stuff like that and how I don't do them, right? And bizarrely, the Irish don't do authority and we don't do laws, but we kind of got stuck on the Bible a bit. Now, the thing is, I've said this before, right? I'm not a religious man, right? I don't even believe in God, but still Catholic, obviously. <laughs> because I'm not a man for text and holding to text really strictly, like laws and rules and regulations, and the Bible thing in particular. For God's sake, we've moved on, right? If you're a religious person, fine, go for that, whatever you're into. But at least in this part of the world, we don't take it literally. There's nobody like there is in America going, no, no, Genesis is a historical fact. And you're going, for God's sake, Genesis was just a load of fairy stories to get the kids to go to bed on a donkey ride to Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, right? <laughs> Stop taking it literally. It's only the Bible. It's not gospel. <laughs> Not every word in it is supposed to be true, right? <laughs> For God's sake. And they, people give out about evolution, right? This wonderful thing that we invented and we came up with this fantastic theory to explain incredibly complex things. And people go, no, no, it's not in the book. It can't be right. How could, and they, on their little arguments, creationist arguments, like, how could the eye just have evolved? It must be a gift from God. And you're going, no, oh, you're not getting the point. <laughs> the whole point of evolution is that random things just happened and the useful ones hung around, right? <laughs> Basically, there were loads of blind monkeys. <laughs> and then one day, a one-eyed monkey wandered into the middle of it all and rode everything left, right and centre. <laughs> and he was king of the monkeys until Mr Feckin' Two Eyes sashayed into the clearing. <laughs> it's a wonder I'm not invited to more churches in Alabama to hear that speech. <laughs> but it just depressed that people go, no, God made buff. Poof, there you go, God made us exactly as we are, right? No, of course he didn't, for God's sake. Three arguments up against that. A, have a look at yourself. <laughs> if you truly think you were created by God, get out of the shower in the morning and look at yourself for a while in the mirror. <laughs> this is the same guy, apparently, who made mountaintops and sunsets. What kind of off day exactly was he having <laughs> when he threw you together? Argument two, if we were truly created by God, then why do we still occasionally bite the insides of our own mouths? <laughs> Have you ever felt less divine than when you suddenly go, ah, oh, I seem to have bitten my thumb on the inside of my mouth. I seem to have chewed at my cheek there. I seem to have forgotten where my lips were. I was so eager to eat that place of pasta, I've eaten through my own face. <laughs> Argument C against the divine creator, the appendix. <laughs> Why would he put it in you when it does nothing except randomly kill you for no good reason? <laughs> Just sit there doing nothing and then fall apart and kill him. Kill him now! <laughs> Scott, do you still have your appendix here? You do indeed, because a good RAF man always holds on to his appendix. <laughs> Who knows the day you might fall behind enemy lines and have to eat grass for a while? <laughs> No, we were not created buff by God, right? I am a science man, I'm a nerd for all that kind of stuff. And I understand people find it bewildering science because it's difficult and we know lots of stuff now and it's tough to keep up with what's happening and it moves very fast. 